My name is Mike Friedlander. I'm the Vice President for Health Sciences and Technology at Virginia Tech, and I'm the director of what's called the Virginia Tech Carillion Research Institute. And we have the honor of hosting this conference today. Uh, I'm going to say a couple words very briefly before I introduce the President of Virginia Tech to welcome you, and then my co-conspirator, Dr. Houdstead from uh, Oslo to uh, set off the conference. Uh, so hopefully uh, everybody knows uh, where they are. They're in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, and you're at the Virginia Tech Carillion School of Medicine and Research Institute. I tried my best to get welcome in the appropriate languages, but I've already been told I actually said welcoming versus welcome in at least one language, so I apologize for my Nordic missteps uh, there. Uh, but hopefully everybody will feel welcome and enjoy the next few days. Uh, I want to start very briefly with this slide. This is a picture of the uh, President of the United States, uh, Barack Obama and the prime ministers and presidents of Nordic countries meeting uh, at the White House uh, uh, not that long ago, I think a few months ago. There have been several meetings recently to discuss issues of political import, military import, economic import, education, commerce, etc. And I just pulled that picture out because I think it does highlight uh, the strength and the long-standing bonds and friendship of uh, the Nordic countries and the United States. And as a small part of that, this conference, which is trying to create a uh, a wider bridge between what goes on in this part of the United States, Virginia, and our colleagues in the Nordic countries. I think uh, it fits very nicely within the template uh, of our leadership of our respective countries. So we're very proud to be uh, a small part of that. Uh, and I'm going to say a lot more uh, in a few minutes about the meeting, and uh, Dr. Haug said we'll say more. But before I do, I'm going to stop now, and I would want to introduce the president of Virginia Tech, uh, Dr. Tim Sands. Dr. Sands has been president here for a couple years at Virginia Tech, and I think it's uh, fair to say that in even two years, he's had a major impact on the growth and trajectory of this university. Uh, prior to this, uh, Dr. Sands was at Purdue University, where he served as a provost. Uh, he is an engineer. Uh, he's worked both in academia and in industry, and has an incredible breadth of experience, and has been a dynamic leader for us in many respects, and very supportive of many things that are going on here at Virginia Tech and at the Virginia Tech Carillion Partnership that you'll hear more about in a moment. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome President Sands to welcome you. Tim. Thank you, Mike. It's, it's great to be here. It's a beautiful morning in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I, I uh, got, had the great fortune of being able to drive uh, from Blacksburg to Roanoke, which Mike does every day pra practically. Uh, and it, it's just a beautiful uh, place in, of the, in the world. I, I'm, I'm really thrilled to uh, be able to welcome you to, uh, to Roanoke. I'd like to welcome also our visitors from the Nordic co uh, countries, from the uh, institutions in the Commonwealth of Virginia, throughout the U.S., uh, from the pharmaceutical and healthcare industries, the NIH. What a great combination of uh, institutions represented here, and uh, it's going to be an exciting meeting. I, I would also like to welcome you, as, as Mike uh, did as well, to, uh, to the Virginia Tech Carillion Partnership. This is something that is uh, really important to Virginia Tech's future. It's probably the, uh, the one signature move that Virginia Tech made some six or seven years ago in partnership with Carillion Clinic that has had a transformative impact on the region and also on uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, before that partnership, we did not have a medical school. Uh, we did not have a uh, significant, uh, I would say, role in, in health care and in, certainly in the health sciences at the level that we do now. And, and it's just a, it's six or seven years in since the beginning of that first phase, and we're about to begin the second phase with the creation of the Health Science and Technology Campus here that you're right sitting in the middle of inside what we call the Roanoke Innovation Corridor. And it's uh, transforming the region, transforming Virginia Tech, and so we're really thrilled to welcome you here if you haven't been here before. We have a great relationship with the Nordic countries uh, in science and education. Um, I've heard about this for, for many years. My, my wife's a gerontologist, and she raves about the science she has for 30 years that is happening in the Nordic countries in gerontology. And uh, of course, here we're ta talking about neuroscience, but uh, I'm so impressed with the talent that the Nordic countries have. And to have you here in, on this topic is just phenomenal. Uh, with the next three, three days, we'll be, uh, provide a, a view of one of science and medicine's most exciting human endeavors. And of course, you all know that, exploration, understanding of the workings of the brain. I, I think the, there's been an unprecedented level of attention lately by governments, universities, health systems, and foundations. Uh, and uh, I, I would just 
mentioned that this is not just a, a topic of interest to the research community, it's becoming more and more a mainstream interest of, of our students. Uh, we've got Harold Sondheimer here, where's Harold, right back here, runs, he's the director of our School of Neuroscience, uh, which started about a year ago. And what do we have, 450 undergraduates and I, uh, already in the program. And I um, spend a lot of time talking to high school students in, in Virginia and around the country, also to uh, entering students who are, who are looking for their direction going forward. And more and more of them are choosing neuroscience. And they're, they're choosing it in the broadest sense. They, they are curious about the brain, and they have this gut feeling that almost any human decision-making discipline in the future is going to require a grounding in neuroscience. And I think you all, in being in the field, understand that. But I'm coming at it from outside the field, and I'm just stunned by the spike in interest. And we're fortunate to have the School of Neuroscience. We're really fortunate to be, have that integrated with the growing emphasis in the neurosciences in our uh, research partnership and our clinical partnership. But I have a sense of all the emerging disciplines out there that this is the one that's going to transform higher education, at least in the U.S., but certainly, certainly at Virginia Tech. Uh, more than any other. Uh, and uh, I don't know how we're going to deal with the groundswell of interest. It's going to be, it, it's, it, that's the scary part, is that uh, there seems to be no limit to the, uh, to our, the interest of our 18-year-olds. And I think that's a really great thing. But now we've got to deal with it. We've got to have the staff to handle it, the faculty, and uh, it's going to take, I think it's going to push the whole field forward just by mass of interest. If you wanted to study something like marketing, you want to study economics, uh, you want to study political science, you better have a grounding in neuroscience. So I'm just warning you from the standpoint of a, of a, a university president, I see this uh, door has been open and it's, it's going to be a, a rush. But of course on the science side of it, there's so much to learn and on the clinical side and it's such an important field. Uh, you see, the, and Mike can cite these and so can you, uh, the number of people that are Im impacted by uh, diseases of the brain, by uh, addiction, by all these other um, uh, I'd say uh, <coughs> scourges on, on humanity, if you will, that we, we have often put in different buckets, but when it all comes together, it's, it's about understanding the brain and all of its functions and its diseases. So um, you're, you're in a, um, a great field and one that if I were an early scientist, early career scientist, I would have gone into, frankly. I'm a, I'm a nanotechnologist, so I like little things, uh, but uh, but I, I build little machines out of hard materials, and uh, they're, they're, they're boring compared to everything that, that I'm hearing out of the neuroscience community. So I welcome you to, uh, to uh, Virginia Tech and to Virginia Tech Carillion. Uh, it's great to have you here. I, I think you'll enjoy the, uh, the, the environment that you're in. I hope you get a chance to, uh, I hope Mike has programmed, it, uh, our organizers have programmed in a little uh, social time. So <laughs> typically, that's not the case. It, it's got, too much science to talk about, but I understand that. But uh, we have some great restaurants in Roanoke, some outstanding hiking. I'm pretty sure there's no time for hiking, but, but uh, we're right on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, we're in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's, it's a really beautiful part. And you get to sample the, the edges of a hurricane. I mean, for those of you in the Nordic countries, you may not be used to hurricanes. Um, Mike tells me, though, that he has been uh, providing the, the you know, mental energy, and I think he's been out there flapping his arms to push this thing a little out to sea, so hopefully it won't interrupt your stay here. But it's just great to have you here. Um, I, I would say also that um, uh, we have representatives from our sister universities in Virginia, fr from uh, the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, from Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond. Uh, we've got uh, representatives from the, the uh, Howard Hughes Medical Institute in Genelia uh, campus in Ashburn, Virginia, and from the NIH. So a lot of uh, opportunity here to interact with the scientific community in neuroscience from Virginia and the National Capital Region. So let me, let me stop there because you've got a lot of science to talk about, but uh, I am just uh, thrilled to be here, thrilled to welcome you here. And I, I hope you, uh, for those of you who are coming from other places from outside of Virginia, we certainly hope to have you back. Um, this is, uh, uh, I think you're getting a snapshot um, of the beginning of something really big in Virginia and in Roanoke, and I hope you come back uh, in, in the not too distant future and, and see how far we've come. So thank you and welcome, and have a great meeting. Thanks very much, Tim, for your kind words. 
Uh, okay, we'll, we'll move on to say a few other things. Uh, I want to make sure, first of all, to thank all the people who have helped make this meeting possible. And we've received support from a number of organizations, colleges, etc. So thanks very much to them for providing the funding to put this meeting on. Obviously, it wouldn't have happened without all of them. Uh, and then again, from uh, me, I want to reiterate what uh, President Sands says. Uh, welcome to Roanoke. This is a picture from a place called Mill Mountain, just about a quarter mile from here, looking out over the city. A uh, beautiful area uh, in the Blue Ridge, as was already mentioned. Uh, and then this is something I wanted to mention briefly. If you get a chance uh, to take a look at this uh, link, this is something called Politico Magazine that last week ran an article about Roanoke called Trains Built Roanoke, Science Saved It. It's a very interesting article. They spent several days in the city looking at what's going on and uh, developed a, a very detailed article. This is our art museum downtown called the Taubman Art Museum. It's a Gary building uh, near the old, the old train areas of Roanoke. <clears throat> so I'll just say that uh, something everybody knows, uh, President Sands alluded to it. I think many of you in our field have seen this quote before. It's probably a dozen years old now uh, by Max Cowan, the finding uh, chief scientific officer of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, and Eric Kandel, many of you know, is a Nobel laureate uh, neuroscientist, said disorders of the central nervous system when taken as a whole account for more hospitalizations, more long-term care, <clears throat> and more chronic suffering than all other disorders combined. Uh, this is my own little quote that I threw on the end uh, there. Brain disorders disenfranchise people, uh, take them out of society in many ways. And we all know that, and we know the mission ahead of us is large and important. Uh, so recently, there are, of course, many articles being written. I just uh, took one out of The Lancet from a few months ago called The Promise of Personalized Medicine by Doble et al. And there's been a lot of talk. And uh, the question is, what are we going to do about it in all of medicine, but in neuroscience in particular? How can we use genomic information? Uh, phenotypic information about people's experiences and lifestyle to think about what we can do to prevent brain disease, keep brains healthy. And I think that is indeed one of, one of the great challenges that we have. So precision neuroscience is a reality. Is it hype? Uh, hopefully we'll address that over the next couple days and we'll see where the opportunities and the reality lie. And I think this will be a very exciting uh, time to do that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Dr. Tor Haugstead. Uh, from Oslo, who's co-chairing uh, this meeting and organizing it with me, and Tor will say a few words as well. Tor? Uh, thank you, Mike, and, th and uh, thank you all of you for inviting us to this collaboration, and thank you to President Sands also for uh, this wonderful I introduction of, of what's going on here, the binary star that's develop uh, developing between uh, um, Virginia here and, and uh, further north in, in Virginia. So uh, I was given uh, the opportunity or the task to, to tell you something about this uh, Virginia Nordic collaboration. Uh, and um, it, uh, it has uh, quite a long history. So I was trained originally as a clinical neurologist. Uh, and I did residencies in um, uh, psychiatry and neurosurgery and clinical neurophysiology. But I understood uh, after all these uh, years that we needed better models. Uh, we uh, did not know en enough about what was going on in the brain to really to be able to, uh, to make wise clinical decisions and to help our patients in a good way. So I talk more about this uh, later in the conference. So um, I uh, went into um, a program for, uh, and, uh, and for a PhD thesis uh, in basic neuroscience studying the uh, uptake and release of uh, um, amino acids uh, during cerebral ischemia, modeled cerebral ischemia and cerebral edema, and I'll talk more about that also later. Uh, and uh, then, uh, defending my thesis, one of uh, my uh, examiners was coming from University of Alabama, John Hablitz. He's formerly been in Norway studying with Per Anderson uh, there. And so um, he recruited me to come to uh, Birmingham, Alabama, where at that time Mike Friedlander was the president of uh, the neuroscience department. Uh, and we got to know each other. So that was a very fruitful experience, and I learned that uh, in the U.S. Uh, there is a, a strive towards uh, better collaboration between uh, clinical uh, uh, bedside uh, neuroscience and uh, uh, the la wet lab laboratory neuroscience and imaging techniques. So this is, uh, you know, we have a great neuroscience tradition in, in Norway all the way back to Fritjof Nansen, and you will hear, hear more about that also later. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the basic scientists sometimes have a tendency to, to go on studying one molecule for the uh, whole of their life. 
uh, and, and the uh, clinical neuroscience, they, uh, they struggle with the patients and there is uh, probably been a history of, of uh, uh, not enough crosstalks uh, between the two. Uh, and so um, we, uh, I, coming back from uh, Alabama to Norway, uh, I, was, uh, um, I was recruited to uh, be the Secretary of Health and Values Commission. Uh, and uh, we have looked into this, as uh, uh, Mike also mentioned, uh, people that uh, have not the full capacity of their brains. They are disenfranchised. They are not able to speak up for themselves. So this also becomes an issue of human rights. Uh, the, uh, a healthy brain is, in, in some ways, a human right. Uh, and so uh, there was a focus on brain health. And we made a study tour uh, of uh, in the US and also visited with uh, Dr. Friedlander in Alabama. And, and so uh, moving on from, from there, we worked with the Ministry of Health uh, to uh, develop ties between what we uh, saw as uh, one of the um, uh, areas that was up and coming in the United States and, and uh, the trad neuroscience traditions in the Nordic countries. And, and then i uh, press this one for the next slide. Yeah. So in, in 2002, we, we, we uh, had the opportunity to arrange a, a study tour for uh, Minister of Health, Dr. Finn Heubrotten, uh, and we started in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, the uh, Norwegian ambassador to uh, the U.S., uh, Knut Wollebeck, he arranged a big meeting there uh, at the Washington, Washington University Club. And from uh, Washington, D.C., we went on to, uh, to uh, uh, Alabama, this is the Civil Rights Museum, Birmingham, Alabama, and you can see how I brought him there, he's uh, number uh, three from the right. And the far right uh, person there is Björn Inge Larsen, he's now Departementsråd, or the chief bureaucrat of the Ministry of Health. So, uh, and here's also um, Professor Clive Bramham from, uh, from Bergen, he's g giving a presentation later uh, in the conference, he's number three from uh, the left there. So uh, this is uh, um, the history of our no uh, Norwegian and Nordic countries' uh, 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 collaboration with, uh, uh, with the U.S. and what's now developing as the brain state of the U.S. Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, Tor. Uh, there was one slide you didn't hit. I'll, I'll hit it for you if it's okay, but I'll just mention this is an email, I guess, or a letter that was sent uh, a couple days ago um, from the minister, uh, Hoy Broughton, uh, about this conference, and he expressed his support for this meeting and looks forward to this uh, turning into a, a stronger partnership. Uh, so I'll just briefly uh, go over uh, the players and uh, the lay of the land here. We have our Nordic country partners here, and by the way, we were able to find uh, the appropriate flags. Virginia Tech has a great flag collection, I learned the other day, so hopefully we got that covered uh, well. Uh, so this represents uh, a lot of land mass, a uh, little more northern latitude uh, than here, and these are the universities that are represented here today. Uh, University of Copenhagen, Aarhus University, Lund University, University of Bergen, University of Oslo, University of Helsinki. I've only been to a couple of these, and. They all look like extremely beautiful places in many ways. I look forward to seeing the rest of them uh, sometime soon. Uh, this is the map of the state of Virginia. Uh, you're right here now in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, this is the border with North Carolina. Washington, D.C. is up along here. And the red dots represent the institutions that are represented at today's meeting within the Commonwealth of Virginia. And so Virginia Tech's main campus is just down the road here in Blacksburg. And we're at the Medical Center campus uh, here in Roanoke. Uh, this is Virginia Commonwealth University and Medical Center in Richmond, the state capital. This is the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, Virginia. And this, I, I'm not quite sure I got that in exactly the right spot, but it's supposed to be Ashburn, uh, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute in Northern Virginia in the capital region. <clears throat> and so these are the institutions within the state that are represented here today. And you, you heard Tori refer to this uh, brain state. Uh, the Virginia governor, uh, current governor, uh, uh, McAuliffe, signed a bond bill recently uh, where he uh, put forth money to do a variety of things in the state, including growing this enterprise with a new building. And he referred to Virginia as the brain state, something we've been talking about for a while. Uh, we, we tend to refer to it today as a Virginia neuroscience initiative, but we're very excited about the support we're getting. 
And these are the institutions within Virginia. This is the main campus of Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. You see a very beautiful area here. This is the main administration building and a, a green area in the campus. This is the Medical Center campus of Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond. Uh, this is the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, a classic, uh, classic view of a building that many of the folks here in Virginia are familiar with. This is a university built by Thomas Jefferson. And this is Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Genelia campus in Ashburn, which is also a, a fantastic facility. So it's, it's a great opportunity to bring folks together. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention there were other institutions participating today that are represented from the Carilion Clinic, Carnegie Mellon, pharmaceutical companies including Eli Lilly, NIH, both mental health and neurological diseases, uh, Sunas Hospital, UCLA, and Wake Forest University. So while well, Virginia and the Nordic countries are the greatest mass of people participating in the conference, we have folks from other places as well. So uh, just very quickly, the background of where you are, you're sitting in this building right here. This is the Virginia Tech Brilliant School of Medicine and Research Institute. This is an outpatient clinic, and directly across the street from us is located this, Carilion Clinic and Roanoke Memorial Hospital. Uh, this represents a, a fairly unique uh, arrangement. It's a public-private partnership. Virginia Tech is a public university, a major research university, and Carilion Clinic is a private, not-for-profit health system. And we joined together and opened our doors about six years ago to create this medical center and health science campus that is continuing to grow in many ways, and it's been a very, very exciting several years. I couldn't resist when I was looking through last night the history of the building that we're in. I realized it was built by Skanska, a Swedish uh, construction company, fifth largest construction company in the world. Uh, this was their U.S. division, so we already have ties in the very bricks and mortar that you're standing in to at least some of our, our Nordic partners, and we're very pleased with the building, by the way. It's turned out very well. Uh, the Research Institute has focus in several areas. By far, the largest is neuroscience and behavioral health sciences, but we also have major research programs in cardiovascular science and regenerative medicine and infectious disease and immunity. Uh, and there's a bit of cancer research that goes on that ties these together. But uh, by far, the largest programs in cellular and molecular neurobiology and computational and cognitive neuroscience, including behavior, are <clears throat> a main focus of the work that goes on here at the Institute. So it's one of the reasons we are so excited to host this particular uh, conference. Uh, 